a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame, a home with a private nightclub, and an island with a fountain of youth. David Copperfield might appear to have it all, but is it just an illusion? Keep watching as we reveal all of this magician's secrets. David Copperfield currently holds 11 Guinness World Records, including most tickets sold worldwide by a solo entertainer, highest earnings for a magician for the noted year, the highest career earnings as a magician, the largest illusion ever staged, and the most magic shows performed in a year. As reported by Guinness World Records, Copperfield was awarded the record for most tickets sold worldwide by a solo entertainer in 2004 after selling approximately 39,690,000 show tickets between 1984 and 2004, the same year he was awarded the record for the highest career earnings as a magician, as he earned a net sum of $661.5 million between 1984 and 2004. In May 2000, Copperfield became the owner of the most expensive poster depicting magic sold at auction with his purchase of a $55,000 1914 lithograph depicting Harry Houdini's water torture cell escape. Guinness World Records reports David Copperfield was awarded with the record for the most magic shows performed in a year in 1994 when he performed 642 shows in seven countries. However, he was not awarded with the record for the highest annual earnings within a year until 2018 for earning $62 million between July 2017 and July 2018. In 1983, Copperfield was awarded for the largest illusion ever staged, for his vanishing Statue of Liberty illusion, which he performed on a CBS television special. It was, it was torture for me, the whole thing was torture, but it was glorious torture. In 2004, David Copperfield was awarded the Guinness World Record for owning the largest magic work archive in the world. The collection, which included an estimated 61,673 items at the time, is housed in the Magician's International Museum and Library of Conjuring Arts. As reported by Forbes, David Copperfield owns half of Harry Houdini's personal library, as well as the largest collection of Houdini's other memorabilia, including the only known recording of the legendary magician's voice. Copperfield also owns Harry Houdini's Mirror Cuff Escape Award, which he was awarded by London's Daily Mirror newspaper in 1904, one of Houdini's straitjackets, the famous Iron Maiden Challenge device, several pairs of Houdini's handcuffs, and one of his sets of lockpicks. David Copperfield's Magic Work Archive also includes an antique levitation device, which was built by an unknown French artist, an intricate monkey automaton, and several complex automatons and mystery clocks created by Jean Eugène Robert Houdin. Forbes reports David Copperfield also owns Dante the Magician's device that he used to create the illusion that women were being sawed in half. Copperfield's massive collection also includes ventriloquist Edgar Bergen's Charlie McCarthy puppet, which starred in the Chase and Sanborn Hour variety program from the 1930s to the 1950s, two of the original Howdy Doody marionettes, and four of Paul Winchell's puppets, including Jerry Mahoney and Knucklehead Smith. So what does the world's wealthiest magician do with all that money? Well, in 2006, David Copperfield purchased his own private island, Musha Key Island in the southern Bahamas for $50 million. As reported by Luxatic, Copperfield spent an additional $40 million to renovate the island's existing structures, build several homes, and add additional recreational facilities. Once the initial renovation was complete, Copperfield purchased 10 other islands surrounding Musha Key, further ensuring the privacy of his beloved Caribbean retreat. According to Venue Report, Copperfield Bay owns several resorts that can be rented by the public, well, those members of the public who are very wealthy, for weddings, corporate events, wellness retreats, and other celebrations. In addition to accommodations and catering services, the island has tropical paths for jogging, hiking, and walking, a free-form swimming pool, and more decadent perks. However, one thing remains off-limits to David Copperfield's guests, the Fountain of Youth. Copperfield discussed his discovery of the mythical spring during a 2006 interview with Reuters. During the phone interview, Copperfield said, I've discovered a true phenomenon. You can take dead leaves. They come in contact with the water. They become full of life again. Bugs or insects that are near death come in contact with the water. They'll fly away. It's an amazing thing. Very, very exciting. During the interview, Copperfield said he hired biologists and geologists to study the properties of the spring. However, he never revealed their findings. 
In 2013, Gavin Cox, a British citizen, traveled to Las Vegas, Nevada to celebrate his birthday. During the trip, Gavin attended David Copperfield's show at the MGM Grand, where he was randomly selected to participate in one of the illusions, specifically the disappearance and reappearance of 13 audience members. As reported by The Independent, the audience participants did not actually vanish, of course. Instead, they were led backstage through a series of secret passageways to another location where they were expected to remain until they would later reappear during the show's finale. Gavin Cox's attorneys said the audience participants were forced to run through the dark passages, which were littered with, quote, construction dust. Gavin said the dangerous conditions contributed to a fall, which left him with both a traumatic brain injury and more than $400,000 in medical bills. NPR reports Gavin Cox said that he was having a good time until he fell. Although he remembers that he fell hard on his side, he claims he doesn't remember getting up off the floor or completing the illusion. As reported by Las Vegas Review Journal, three other women who participated in the Vanish audience member illusion testified that they also suffered injuries in the dark passageways. A jury ultimately determined David Copperfield was not liable for Gavin Cox's injuries. However, the magician was dismayed that so many details about the lucky number 13 illusion were revealed during the trial. Even the most casual viewer of David Copperfield can see, legal issues notwithstanding, that above all else, he's a performer and entertainer. He and his jazz-handed stage poses go well above and beyond in the pageantry and spectacle category, which is doubtlessly a big reason why he stands out from his magical peers. And if you ever wondered where he gets his sense of showmanship, you have only to look at classic Hollywood cinema. Don't stop the camera. As Copperfield said in an interview with Forbes, his greatest career influences weren't death-defying stunt magicians like Houdini, but old-timey dancers, actors, singers and directors, Fred Astaire, Gene Kelly, Frank Sinatra, Orson Welles, even Alfred Hitchcock. These are just some of the figures from whom Copperfield drew inspiration. As he said, I was inspired to bring storytelling to magic, romance, choreography, all the elements of film and theater that I loved. Copperfield's focus on storytelling is pretty clear. Take his Great Wall of China illusion. There's a beginning and setup, then a complication in which the audience waits in anticipation, and an end where tension gets resolved and David appears on the other side of the wall. Such narrative structuring creates far greater performances than standalone stage tricks, such as tugging rabbits out of hats. Copperfield has done more than a couple of on-camera tutorials. One time, for instance, he showed an interviewer for the Wall Street Journal how to do an impossibly balanced dollar bill trick. The trick, as he showed, involved secretly inserting a palmed quarter inside a folded bill to keep the bill balanced. He also did a career retrospective with GQ where he didn't necessarily divulge the secrets of every single illusion, but he discusses his tactics behind each illusion's construction, including the business side of things. For his Great Wall of China illusion, for example, he discusses how he had to collaborate with the Chinese government and television networks. One of Copperfield's tricks, dubbed Grandpa's Aces, has been scrutinized, analyzed, and replicated by amateur magicians quite a lot. When Copperfield performed the illusion, he described how it was taught to him by his grandfather before he became famous. The illusion is a multi-step trick that uses a seemingly normal deck of cards. Copperfield somehow flips the aces out of the deck, makes them vanish, and reappear in a specific and seemingly impossible sequence. Copperfield may have receded somewhat from the magic-dusted limelight of late, but that doesn't mean he's vanished along with the Statue of Liberty. Those looking to behold the maestro of magic can just buy a ticket to see him at the MGM Grand Hotel in Las Vegas, provided you feel like dropping between $70 to $220 per person for two hours of Grand Illusion. Via the MGM Grand website, Simply stroll the casino floor and you'll find Copperfield in his eponymous David Copperfield Theater, set aside just for him apparently, after some left turns and a bit more walking. Copperfield puts on a shocking number of shows at the MGM Grand. He performs every single day, seven days a week, with the occasional cluster of days off between months, as seen on the MGM Grand booking site. Bear in mind that Copperfield is currently 65 years old. We suppose his $17.5 million, 31,000-square-foot Las Vegas home isn't going to pay for itself. His house, it should be noted, contains a wine cellar, a full-service spa, and a nightclub with a bar and dance floor, among other amenities. Despite his rigorous performance schedule, 
David Copperfield has somehow managed to make time for a personal life, and he enjoyed a high-profile relationship that made him often pop up in the tabloids during the 1990s. Copperfield was involved with German model Claudia Schiffer at the height of her supermodel era fame. The couple reportedly dated for six years and were often photographed together on the red carpet. Despite the public's fascination with the pair, it would seem that romance is no longer at the forefront of Copperfield's mind. Referring to the relationship with Schiffer, Copperfield told E! News, Oh, that was a long time ago. Now I'm engaged and in a committed relationship with Chloe in my mind and my heart. The Chloe he's referring to is French former model Chloe Gosselin, with whom he shares a daughter named Skye. Copperfield also has two older children from previous relationships. The couple became engaged in 2014 and Gosselin is now a shoe designer, per Marie Claire. In 2007, Lacey L. Carroll accused David Copperfield of sexually assaulting her while she was a guest on his private island. As reported by ABC News, Carroll said Copperfield met her at one of his shows and asked her to later join him at his private island getaway. ABC News reports Carol's accusation was called into question when she accused another man of sexually assaulting her in 2009, and surveillance footage recovered during the investigation of that case revealed that she allegedly lied about the details of her interactions with the man. Now, to be falsely accused of something mm -hmm. that horrendous mm -hmm. is uh, a devastating thing for yourself, your friends, your family, really bad. Then, in 2018, Brittany Lewis said David Copperfield sexually assaulted her in 1988 when she was 17 years old. As reported by The Wrap, Lewis said the alleged assault happened after one of Copperfield's shows. In her interview with The Wrap, Lewis said she saw Copperfield pour something into her drink while they were at a bar. Although she questioned him about it, she reportedly blacked out after a few sips. Lewis told The Wrap, I remember my clothes being taken off. He was kissing my face, and then I remember him starting to go down on my body with his face. However, she reported that she then completely blacked out in the midst of the alleged assault. The following morning, Lewis asked Copperfield what happened, and he reportedly told her that nothing happened because she was underage. He then reportedly made her sign a statement saying she was okay before she left to return home. David Copperfield was never charged or convicted in either case and has vehemently denied the allegations. If you or anyone you know has been a victim of sexual assault, help is available. Visit the Rape, Abuse, and Incest National Network website or contact Rain's National Helpline at 1-800-656-HOPE.